Welcome to the second video in this series, Excel for Stock Market, where we publish 30 different Excel templates and explain them in 30 different videos in a space of 30 days. If you have missed the previous video, I am providing a link to the playlist so you can actually go and click on it and watch the previous videos or in a sequence. We will also put the card um, on the YouTube on the top right side of your screen. Please look at them. I think it'll be it'll make it easier to follow along in a sequence. All the templates in the series are available to download from inzara.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about the stock price chart that you're seeing here, the template and its features. We will talk about the stock history function, which is the foundation of how the data is being brought into Excel. And finally, I will cover about the steps that I've followed to create this template. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. If you find this content useful, please share with your friends who would benefit from it. Now let's get started. In terms of the features of this template, the inputs are basically, you just type in the stock symbol. So if I type in, so AAPL and I hit enter. Now Excel is trying to associate that with a specific stock and it's not able to because there are multiple apples. So I'm gonna select the NASDAQ stock exchange and now you see that it's updated. So if I want, for example, NASDAQ stock exchange, TSLA. So since I typed in with the stock exchange abbreviation XNAS, Excel is able to now associate with that specific stock. But if I didn't put um, XNAS, then it doesn't know which one, so it'll ask for it. So depending on what you type in, so let me type in F for Ford Motor Company. And now, once again, if there are multiple F, it can associate with, it'll ask you for that. So you can either do this approach or if you know the exchange abbreviation. So for example, this is the um, New York Stock Exchange. So then I can close this and I come back here. If, because I know that XNYS is New York Stock Exchange, I can type it in. So just be aware that if you do not know the exchange or if that unique thing has multiple exchanges, then you would have to actually go, let's say for example, there type change. Now it'll ask me for which Microsoft and I can associate. So now that's the input. Once you input, you can see all this information got automatically updated. So on the left sidebar, you have all the price, the price change, currency, latest day price, um, share information in terms of volume, and also about the company itself. So all of that information gets automatically updated. The more fun part is what you see on the right side here, which is the stock price history. So the let's look at the chart first. The blue line indicates the price, um, which is the price history, and the histograms at the bottom, the red and the green, they represent the trading volume on each of those days. Now, there is um, interactivity within this chart. For example, you see the slicers here. Now I'm looking at year to date. If I want to look at last six months of history, I can just click on six months. Now I will see six months of history. I can do three months. I can do even five years. So it'll now pull in five years of history for this stock and it'll now you know, represent them in the chart here. Obviously this is a lot of history, but in case, let's go back to year to date, which is a shorter history. Now you can see that there are min and the max price points. These price points are the minimum and the maximum points within the time frame that you see on screen, which is year to date. So they will dynamically change when you change the time period using the slicer. There's also one more interactivity, which is the daily, weekly, and monthly. So if I go back to weekly, now it'll try to process again and say, hey, every week. So you see 28th December, so it starts because we are doing year to date. Um, so it goes back to the last uh, week in um, 2020, and then it'll show every week in 2021. And that's how the data points for the price are plotted. The minimum and maximum are also automatically dynamically calculated for you. So this is really powerful um, very elegant way of looking at a price chart, which you will see in a lot of online websites uh, in the stock market area, but now you can get it in Excel in an interactive uh, and very actionable and meaningful um, visual. 
So all of this, again, it's automated. You just have to click the slicers to get this benefit. I haven't mentioned about the timepiece, which we mentioned in the previous video. Um, you can type in the offset. Uh, I am seven hours behind the UTC time. So I'm putting minus seven. If you're ahead, you will put in whatever the number of hours is. And then this represents your time. Um, so for me, this is my current time, Pacific time. And this is the date for when this data was refreshed. So if I refresh it after a few minutes, this will get updated. Um, each exchange has a different delay. So this is not like live data, which keeps updating every second, but there could be up to a 15 minute delay in the NASDAQ stock, stock exchange, which we talked about in the previous video uh, a little bit. So that's what the template does. Now let's talk a little bit about how the data actually comes through this. The key um, function that we are using to do this is called the stock history function. So in order to demonstrate that, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this option here, stock history, and I can open it. And let me make a little bit more room. Okay, so we need to provide a stock uh, information or the stock uh, symbol here. So I'm gonna click on this cell, which is our stock symbol, and which is right now Microsoft. And I can do then a comma, and now I need to provide a start date. So, you know, you can put in a start date. Um, you know, let me just refer to a cell here. This is our start date. And then this is our end date. And end date is optional. And then you can do interval. Interval is do you want daily data? Let me just do daily. And then headers. Do you want the headers or without the headers? Let's have the headers. And then I can do zero. Um, for date because I want the date to be displayed and I want the closing price comma and then let's say I want the volume five you can use any order you can have all of these six properties date closing price open price high low volume you can choose all of these six in any order to be displayed um, and then I'm going to go and close it hit enter obviously this is referring to two date columns that I need to enter. So let me, for example, put um, March 1st, 2021, March 20th, 2021. So now you see that as soon as I put in the start and end date, it showed the history of the stock prices and it shows the close price and the volume because that's what we chose. You remember that this function uh, the formula was entered in only one cell, but it will automatically expand um, as more dates are entered. So let's say, for example, my start date is now February 1st. Now you'll see that it pulls data from February 1st all the way until March 19th, because March 20th is weekend and there was no trading. So only the trading days will show up here. So for example, Feb 12th, 13, 14, 15 are missing. Feb 5th, 6th and 7th are missing. So similarly, only trading days will be showing up here. But this is what the stock history function does. Pulls in the history given your start and end date and given your stock and also in an order of the columns that you want to be displayed. And the headers, you can choose to have the headers or not have the headers. So this is the stock history function. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and just clear this off. And the for the final part of this video, I want to talk about how um, like overview of the steps I used to build this dynamic interactive stock price chart. So there are six different steps I'm going to follow. The first step um, I will talk about is the bringing all the data stock history for the last up to five years of history information for the stock. Um, I can show you that when I unhide in the help sheet, and I'm also going to unhide first the pivot sheet also. We'll go to the pivot sheet later. But in the help sheet, you can see that I'm pulling in all the um, information, the six columns of information using this stock history formula. And this is the same that I explained in the previous um, part of the video. I'm just using it to bring up to five years here. And I'm doing that because I'm hard coding up to 18, 30 days. Um, and again, if you can, if you want to go back more than five years, you can. 
I am, uh, I think I was able to go back until 2012, like nine years of data or so. Um, so there's more history if you would like to pull it in. So the first step is to create this history. So we get that. And then the second step is to move this data into a table. So you see that all these six columns are nothing but here. I'm just using a simple index function to bring all the data over. And that's because it's a little bit easy to manipulate and everything with the, with the table, at least for me. So I bring it into a table. The third step is to add some more calculations, which I have here, these two, the volume green and volume red. If you remember that we saw the green and the red um, bars and we need to calculate the values first before we can put it into the chart. And so what I have here is if the closing price is greater than the previous closing price, then we put it into the green column. If it is less, then we put it into the red column. Very simple if function to use and um, we just um, calculate those two columns. I have a column called dummy and all I'm doing here is to check, take the volume and then multiply it by four and it'll create a much larger um, value. And I use it so that if I go back to the chart, the volumes are um, the green and the red bars. We don't want this to, you know, overlay over the price information. So we want the bars to be shorter than they otherwise would. So for that, I'm using a dummy, really large number, so that Excel will try to fit that in. And so now these bars will become shorter. So just for that visual effect, I'm using the dummy column. Now we move on to the fourth step in our process, which is identify what the user is actually choosing in the time period. So when the user is choosing year to date or one year or five years, we need to receive that input and then find out when our chart should, where our chart should begin. So if I choose year to date, the chart is beginning from 31st December, 2020. If I do one year, it goes all the way back to March 23rd. So it goes back one year. So depending on what the user is selecting, we want the starting date of the chart to dynamically change. So in order to do that, we go to the pivot sheet where we use the um, this options here, the period. This is a simple table. We build a pivot table on top of that and then we put the slicer. The slicer is what you see here. And when the user is clicking on the slicer, it actually will update this value here. And now we use this value to define what the starting date should be. And I do that in the help sheet. Here the starting row. This is the chart starting row is using a certain formula to bring in based on the user selection in the slicer. Um, and again, I'm not going into each of the formulas and explain how to write it. That would be a much longer uh, video. If you're interested, if you think that that'll be you know helpful, please, post your uh, interest in the comments below. And if a lot of people find it useful, I'm happy to do that video. It'll be a longer video, but if you think it'll be useful, I'm happy to do it. Right now, the focus is I'm giving you the total overall six steps that you that I followed. You can download this template. Um, you can look at all the formulas. And if you are trying to understand and if you have questions, please let me know and I'm happy to answer. We are in the fourth step. We found out where the chart should start. And we also know how many days of history we have because that's the number of trading days. We can we already have that here. Uh, we can count this. And using these two, I can calculate where I should start, where I should end for the dynamic charting period. So that's what I've done in step number four. Step number five is to, to basically calculate the maximum and the minimum prices. So now we know where the dynamic period is. I can get the maximum date. I can also get the minimum date. And now with these two dates, now I can go and find during this window, what was the maximum price? During this window, what was the minimum price? So once I have these minimum and the maximum price, in order to plot them on the chart here, what I do is I create a column, two columns here, this is um, actually the 
header is not clear. This is the high label. This is the low label. Um, essentially, wherever the price is equal, then show me the price. Otherwise, put minus one. Similarly, in the low, wherever that's equal to the minimum price, use the price. Otherwise, put minus one. I'm doing minus one because on the chart, this axis, the price, the the one on the right side, the secondary axis starts from zero. So anything negative or anything below zero will be not visible to the user. So this max price and the minimum price are shown. Every other point will be not visible. So that, that is the technique that I've used to build the minimum and the maximum points on the chart. So now for the final, um, final step in this process is how do you actually build the chart? Now that you know, we have all this information in this table, we have all these columns calculated, but now how do we bring them into the chart? This is where if you click and say select data, you will see that we have all those min, max, price, and all these columns, right? This is normal, but how do you make it into a, a dynamic thing? We do it using a named range. So I'm going to show you again. Um, again, these formulas are a little bit long. It might take a little bit more time to explain, but I do want you to focus here on CH date, CH dummy, CH max, min, price, wall, green, wall, red. All these are used in the chart. This is what is plotted on the chart. And all of them use a very same structure in the formula. Offset function is used. We start from a cell. And then we offset accordingly and find the starting point of the chart. And then from there, we we go as long as we need to until we until when we need to stop. That is what the offset function is doing. And we do that for every one of those columns that we calculated in the help sheet. And we store them here in the name manager first. Then when we go into the chart, we actually will say, OK, what is minimum? And I can hit edit and you'll see that I'm bringing in that CH underscore min named range in the chart. So this is how we build the calculated columns. Then we use the named range to store the dynamic uh, range using offset function. And then we bring that name ranged into the chart so that that is used for display. And this is the approach. These are the six steps used to create a dynamic and uh, interactive chart. And you can see this min and the max dates are nicely displayed. And then again, if we want to change it, I can go XNAS, Tesla. It takes three seconds maybe in this case. And again, it's, it varies, but you can see that within three seconds, you're able to get a nice visual of a different stock with all the information, price history, up to five years. You can go even up to nine years if you like from what I've seen. If you have any questions about anything we covered, please post them in the video um, comments below. I do know that I went really quickly over the complex calculations. Each of those steps would require a separate video to properly fully explain step by step. Uh, if you really think that's useful, please post them in the comments below and I will be happy to look into it. We will talk tomorrow about another price chart, but this time we'll actually be talking about Forex currency rate um, chart. And please don't um, forget to subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified of the next video. And also, if you find this content helpful, please share with your friends and spread the message. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow.